Hi guys, today's video is gonna be about bassinets on airplanes. I posted a photo on my Instagram of the time that I booked an airplane bassinet for my son and I got a lot of messages about what the heck is this? Some people didn't even know that you could book an airplane bassinet for your baby. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything I know about airplane bassinets, the pros and cons, who's eligible to book one, how to book one, where you have to sit on the plane in order to book one, how much it costs, my own not so great experience using the airplane bassinet and why why you might not want to book one either. Or maybe why you would want to book one. You can make up your own mind after watching this video. My name is Brittany and this is my YouTube channel all about having adventures and traveling with my family. Please remember to like this video down below and subscribe if you want to hear more things like this. Okay, so first of all, what is an airplane bassinet? Some people think this is some kind of product that you have to buy to take onto the plane with you and that's absolutely not true. This is a bassinet that the airline provides that you can use while you're flying on their plane. A bassinet attaches to the wall of a bulkhead seat row. The bulkhead row, if you don't know, is that big row with a little bit of extra leg room that's right at the front of the plane or right at the front of each section of the plane. Usually it's right next to the airplane galley where they make all the food or right and or right next to the bathroom area. Airplane bassinets come in all different shapes and sizes and really vary depending on the airplane and the airline. For baby age and weight, the airlines seem to be all over the place with this. Anywhere from newborns to 18 months it seems to be. Some bassinets are really small, some are bigger and sturdier. The maximum weight seems to be anywhere from like 15 to 25 pounds. They aren't attached when you first walk onto the plane, which is why you might not have ever noticed them before. They can't attach them to the wall until after takeoff until after the seatbelt signs are off. So you have to hold your baby during takeoff and landing. You also have to take your baby out of the bassinet during landing and they take the bassinet back down off of the bulkhead wall. So essentially the bassinet is only attached to the bulkhead wall during the flight while the plane is in the air. Bassinets are generally free to book but you may have to pay extra to sit in the bulkhead row or to choose your seats in the bulkhead row. Just FYI on some bulkhead rows your TV screen and your food tray will come out of your armrest on the side instead of having those things fold out in front of you or the screen right in front of you, I guess. Okay, so which airlines and airplanes have bassinets on them? Generally, all major airlines will offer some sort of bassinet on long haul flights. Budget airlines, not so much. I'm gonna put a link down below of airlines that offer bassinet seats on their long haul flights. I have to say that all of the airlines that I've flown on seem to want to make it as vague as possible as to what what exactly they offer. They don't seem to ever want to guarantee anything. And sadly, I've even heard of parents who have booked their bulkhead row seats, reserved their bassinet, only to be bumped at the last minute by some passenger who had a higher status and wanted to sit in the bulkhead row. It's crazy what airlines can do, and it can be really, really stressful for parents who are just trying to have a nice, calm flight with their baby, and for everybody on the flight to have a calm, experience. We've flown over 30 times with our son and we've only used the bassinet once and it wasn't really great. It wasn't an awesome experience. So if you're watching this and you haven't been able to book a bulkhead row or a bassinet seat for your baby, hopefully these cons of the bulkhead row or the bassinet will make you feel a little bit better. It was on Lufthansa. We were flying uh, cross transatlantic. I believe it was from Boston to Frankfurt. Before this flight, I'd just never really been interested in booking a bassinet before. My son was a contact napper, so he always slept on one of us. He spent most of our other flights napping in a wrap or a carrier. But when we got on this flight, we noticed that Lufthansa just automatically booked us in the bulkhead row and asked us if we wanted a bassinet. We noticed actually that they had put all of the babies in the bulkhead rows. So I don't know if this is some kind of policy that they have that they'll just book you in those seats if they're available. Our son was already 13 months old. We thought he was too big at that point for the bassinet, but we were interested in trying it out. It seemed really big and sturdy for our big 13 month old baby boy. He fell asleep on us like he always used to and then we transferred him into the bassinet and it was a glorious, glorious one hour that he stayed in the bassinet one hour where my husband and I got to eat in peace and watch a movie. But that's it on this like 
eight hour flight or something. He only slept in the bassinet for about an hour. Outside of that, it was just kind of annoying to have the bassinet there. It was in our way. It was kind of like clunky. It was awkward for us to stand up with the bassinet there. You don't have any under seat storage in front of you. So if you want to have your diaper bag with you during takeoff and landing, you can't. This isn't a huge problem because when we've had the bulkhead row, personally, we've just taken out the most essential things that we might have needed for takeoff and we shoved them into the seat pocket and then if I needed anything during the flight my husband could stand up and get it for me if I had my baby son sleeping on me but I could see how sitting in the bulkhead row when you're flying alone could be really difficult not having that space under the seat in front of you another con is that you are at the front of the plane or you're at the front section of the plane so you may feel a little bit self-conscious that everybody's looking at you especially if you're having a hard time no one's probably really looking at you but it can feel that way sometimes a big, big con for us was that it was noisy and there was a lot of light coming from the people coming in and out of the bathroom or in and out of the galley or making food or doing the meal, the drink service versus like the back of the plane, the last row of the plane tends to be nice and dark and quiet. If you're using any toddler beds on the airplane, like an inflatable footrest or one of those lay flat sort of inflatable beds. These might be tough to use in the bulkhead row because a lot of them rely on a tighter space in order to stay in place on the plane. You may be wondering, are bassinets safe? Are airplane bassinets safe? Which is an excellent question. According to the FAA website, nothing is safe except for having your car seat on the plane, which is something that we've never followed because we have always had our son in our laps. He's not two years old yet, so he's always flown as a lap baby. A bassinet is not in any safer unfortunately there are like safety belts there was I think some kind of velcro thing that went over our Sun but that would not be safe in any kind of turbulence or emergency situation another thing to keep in mind for bassinets and why airplane bassinets can be really inconvenient is that if there's any kind of turbulence if the seatbelt sign goes off you're gonna have to take your baby out of the bassinet meaning you'll probably have to wake them up not super ideal other cons like I said if your baby doesn't like it it's just kind of in the way booking it can be a big pain in the butt which we'll talk about in just a minute but the amazing pro of a bassinet seat is that if your baby does like it especially if you have a red eye they'll sleep in it and you can relax and rest and watch a movie and maybe even get a little bit of sleep on the plane there's extra leg room there's extra room on the floor so even if you choose not to use the bassinet your baby has some extra room to sort of crawl around in front of you or you can lay them down on the ground in front of you to sleep baby or toddler I should say this is especially useful useful for your lap baby and your lap baby can sit on your lap up until they're two years old. If you have a two-year-old or an almost two-year-old on your lap, it's really nice to have the bulkhead row, especially if you don't have an extra seat for them. They can at least lay on the ground in front of you. One of the things I really like about this row is that there's nobody sitting in front of you for your toddler to bother or to kick the seat. And there's nobody to recline back into you, which is the worst when you have a lap baby. I've had so many, like I can't blame them because they purchased the seat, but I've had people recline into me while I had a baby on my lap and had nowhere else to put my baby. It sucks and with the bulkhead row you don't have to worry about this. As I mentioned before you're close to the galley which is really great if you need assistance from a flight attendant. They're usually right there doing something in the galley so you can ask them for help or you can get up and rock your baby in that little galley area if you need to which is super convenient if you have an upset baby. You're close to the bathrooms for yourself and also for easy diaper changes. You can get off the plane first or close to first which is really important if you have a connection or if you have an upset baby ultimately maybe our son was just a little bit too old for the bassinet seat by the time he used it same with the little toddler girl sitting next to us who didn't seem to like her bassinet very much either they might just be best for newborn babies or little babies or babies that are just happier with not having to have contact naps all the time okay how to book a bassinet on the airplane there are not always a lot available because you really have to be in a specialized row of the airplane meaning that there's just not a lot of them there's not a lot of places to put them so first thing I would do go to the airlines website the airline that you're flying make sure they have them an airplane bassinet you will most likely have to call them directly so you'll book your flight online 
and then you're gonna call them. Call that 1-800 number. It is a pain in the butt because you're gonna have to sit there for a long time waiting to speak to someone, unfortunately. Talk to someone, reserve the bassinet, tell them that you want the bulkhead row, you want the bassinet, and then you're gonna have to do it again. You're gonna have to follow up in the days leading, the days right before your flight. Call that number again and make sure that you still have all of that, the bulkhead and the bassinet reserved. It sucks, it's not fun. They don't make it easy for parents flying with a little baby, I know. Or if trying out the bassinet is not something that's desperately important to you, you could do what we did and just show up at the check-in on the day of your flight and request it right there and then. Maybe your flight's not super full, maybe there's just bulkhead seats or bassinets available and they'll just give them to you. Like what happened to us on Lufthansa. We actually didn't even request it at all. They just automatically booked our seats in the bulkhead row and offered us a bassinet. If you have flown using an airplane bassinet, I would love to hear your take on this down below in the comments. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Like us, how old was your baby when you used one? Do you have any tips or tricks for ensuring that you can book one? Let us know down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.